The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mail. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made, Hello? You guys back? Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 uh, my internet failed on me, but are we back now? Yes. And you can yes, see that. we're good. What's that? I said, yep, we're good. <laughs> okay, and you can see the Zoom meeting session thing and all that. All right, yeah. let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, I have some questions that uh, were sent in to me a couple of days ago and somehow I missed them. So we're gonna look at some questions from section 5.1. And first of all, we're gonna look at number 18, which says the following, the quantity negative one fourth, T to the fifth, U to the sixth, the whole thing to the fourth power. So what we have is a product raised to a power, as well as a quotient in terms of this part, so we're going to attach the outside exponent to each piece. So we're going to have negative 1 to the 4th over 4 to the 4th, t to the 5th to the 4th, u to the 6th to the 4th. Negative 1 to the 4th power is 1. 4 to the 4th power is 256. A power raised to a power, you would multiply the exponent. So t to the 5th to the 4th would be t to the 20th, and t, uh, u to the 6th to the 4th would be u to the 24th. So there is your final answer, or you could also write it like, let's see here, hang on. Uh, like that. Any questions on that one? No. <clears throat> right. Moving on. And this is being recorded, as you know, so if you don't get a chance to write everything down, you can always go back and look at today's video. Uh, let's see here. This is problem number 20. Use rules for exponents to simplify the expression. We have the quantity negative 2a to the 18th power over negative 2a to the 14th power. When we're dividing two powers with the same base, we subtract the bottom exponent from the top exponent. 18 minus 14 is 4. So we get the quantity negative 2a to the fourth power. But now I have a product raised to the fourth power. So I attach the power to each factor inside. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 times negative 2 is 8 times negative 2 is 16. And a to the fourth is just that a to the fourth. We okay with that? Any questions there? No. All right. This is 5.1 number 21. Use the power of a quotient rule for exponents to simplify the expression. 8g to the fifth power over 7h squared, all squared. So again, we have a product quotient combination raised to an outside power. So we're gonna attach that two outside to everything inside. So eight squared, g to the fifth squared over seven squared, h squared squared. Eight squared is 64, g to the fifth to the second, a power raised to a power, we multiply the exponents. Seven squared is 49, h squared squared, a power raised to a power, we multiply the exponents. And there's the final answer for that one. Okay, good to go on? Yes. Here is number 25. Simplify the expression if possible. If the expression cannot be simplified, give or enter the given expression. We have two s squared over three t to the sixth power, all raised to the sixth power. So again, we have that uh, product 
quotient combination raised to an outside power. So we're going to attach that exponent of a six outside to each thing inside. So we've got two to the sixth power, s squared to the sixth power, over three to the sixth power, t to the sixth power to the sixth power. Let's see, two to the sixth power, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. A power raised to a power, s squared to the sixth power would be s to the 12th power. Three to the sixth power, let's see here what that is. Three to the sixth power is 729. And then t to the sixth to the sixth would be t to the 36th power. So there's that final answer. And now we're gonna look at the bowling ball in the box problem. We did several of these the other day, as some of you may remember. We good yep. to go on to that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so this is 5.1 number 30. And let me just show a picture of this for a minute so we know what we're talking about. So we've got this bowling ball that's inside of a cubic shaped box. We're told, it says, find expressions for the volume of the ball and box. Leave pi in your answer. Assume that A equals six. Okay, so for this picture, A is six. The, the formula for the volume of a sphere, which is what the bowling ball is, is V equals four thirds pi R cubed. Okay, now, a is equal to six. So what we've got here is the dimension of across here would be six X. This dimension would be six X. This dimension would be six X. Likewise, the diameter of the bowling ball would be six X inches. Okay, now, The diameter is six X inches, but the radius would be half of that or three X inches. So the volume of the bowling ball is four thirds times pi times three X, the quantity cubed. Okay, so far so good? Yeah. So this is four thirds pi times three cubed X cubed, which is four thirds pi, three cubed is 27, so 27 X cubed. We can reduce the 27 over the three to nine over one. So now we've got four times pi times nine or 36 pi X cubed cubic inches. So the volume of the sphere or the bowling ball is 36 pi x cubed and then cubic inches. We okay with that? Yes. Yes. All right. Now, the second part, find the volume of the cube. The volume of the cube, the box that's cubic shape, would be the length of the side cubed. And the length of the side was ax inches, so 6x inches. So the volume would be 6x, the quantity cubed. 6 times 6 times 6 is 216, and x cubed is x cubed. So we get 216x cubed cubic inches. Mm. All right, with that? Yes. OK, so with that, we're now going to go on to the next section. Give me just a second here to get things up and going, and let's see. Come on, there we go. All right, so this is section 5.4. Today we're gonna to talk about polynomials. And let's say we have a single term that contains a variable. So let's say we've got four X to the sixth power. 
that is a single term. It is called a monomial. Do you know what a monocle is? Anybody? No, no I don't. You ever watch the old show Hogan's Heroes? No. No. <laughs> That's okay. All right. A monocle is a single lens that you'll see a person that kind of have it held up there to their eye. Anyway, my point is mono, besides being a sickness, mono means one. So a monomial is an expression with one term. Okay. How many wheels are on a bicycle? Two. Two. So a binomial has two terms. How many wheels on a tricycle? Three. So a trinomial has three terms. Poly means many. A polynomial would be an algebraic expression with many terms. So anything with four or more terms, we don't call it like a quadrinomial or a quintrinomial or whatever. We call them polynomials. We also group all of these as being polynomials, even though it always bothers me that we refer to that as a polynomial, but every textbook I've ever seen does that. So they're all polynomials, but specifically a monomial, a binomial, and a trinomial, okay? So mono means one and poly means many. Have any of you ever played the game Monopoly? Yes. Except yes. it's called what? Monopoly. 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 But it's one many, yeah. Anyway, I'm sure that's changed your whole life knowing that. <laughs> now, Let's say we've got a trinomial, 4x squared minus 3x plus 7. The first term is 4x squared. The second term is negative 3x. And the third term is a positive 7. So when we talk about the terms, we think in terms of addition. So we think of this as 4x squared plus negative 3x plus 7. We don't literally have to rewrite it this way, but that's why the negative sign is part of the second term, okay? Now, the coefficient of a term is the number in front of the variable. So for the first term, the coefficient is four. For the second term, the coefficient is negative three. For the third term, the coefficient is the seven. Now, a minute ago I said, the coefficient is the number in front of the variable. And you might say, well, there is no variable in the third term. True, but you could put x to the zero power there. I mean, call x to the zero power as one and it wouldn't change the value of it. So that's kind of a way of justifying why we can say the coefficient of the third term is seven. Okay, don't lose sleep over that. Now, let's talk about the degree of each term. The degree of this first term is two. The degree of the second term, there's an implied one, and the degree of the third term, even without the x to the zero power there, is zero. I'm not saying that this is seven to the zero power. The degree of the term is the sum of all the exponents on all the variables within the term. So it's second degree, first degree, zero degree. Let's see if you've got that. Okay. Um, let's see, five X squared Y plus eight x y cubed minus 17x plus 42, all right? So this is a polynomial. The first term 
is 5x squared y. Okay. What's the coefficient? Five. What's the degree of the term? Careful. Two. What's that? Two. No. Hmm? The sum of all the exponents and all the variables. There's something there that's implied. Three. There's an implied one there, right? So yes. it would be degree three. Okay. All right. Second term is 8xy cubed. What's the coefficient? 8. eight. eight. What's the degree of the term? 3. Look again. Four, no. Oh, wait. 4. 4. Four. <clears throat> OK. You either have a small child that sounds like a cat or a cat. <laughs> yeah, I have a cat. <laughs> third term, what's the coefficient? Oh, wait, the third term is negative 17x. What's the coefficient? Mm, negative 17. And the degree of the term? One. Excellent. Fourth term is 42. What's the coefficient? 42. And the degree of the term? Careful. Zero. Zero, right. So the degree of the term is the sum of all the exponents on all the variables within the term. Since there's, you can say, well, there's no variables there, so it can be zero. Okay, uh, let's see here. Is this a monomial, binomial, trinomial, or none of these? How many terms are there? Two. So it's a um, like a bisexual binomial. There you go, bisexual. <clears throat> Nine x uh, y. How about that one? How many terms? It's just one. So it's a monomial. monomial. Yeah. Okay. Uh, three fifths x to the fourth minus two fifths x cubed plus three fifths x minus one. Is this a monomial, binomial, trinomial, or none of the above? Uh, I would say none of the above. And you are correct. Yeah. <laughs> none of the above. But it, we could also say it is a polynomial but the directions in the book just say they don't they don't have that as an option okay and what about this one monomial binomial trinomial none of the above trinomial excellent what's the degree of that term Three. What's the degree of that term? Five. What's the degree of that term? Uh, one. Excellent. Okay. All right, you're doing very well. Uh, let's see here. Now we're gonna do some evaluating of an expression, okay? So we have the following expression x squared minus x plus one. We are to evaluate this for x equals two and x equals negative three. So what we're gonna do is substitute the number in place of the variable. So when a is two, you'd have two squared minus two plus one, which is four minus two plus one, which is two plus one, which is three. So the value of this expression when x is 2 is 3. OK? Mm -hmm. Now, what if x is negative 3? You'd have negative 3, the quantity squared. x is being squared, so all of negative 3 is squared, minus negative 3 plus 1. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. 
Subtracting a negative is like adding a positive. So plus three plus one is 13. Okay, how about this one? One third B squared minus one ninth B and part A, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Part A, B is nine and part B, B is negative nine, okay? So for part A, when B is nine, we get one third times nine squared minus one ninth times nine. which is one third times 81 minus one ninth times nine. I could reduce 81 over three to 27 over one. So I get 27. I could reduce nine over nine to one over one. So I get minus one, which is 26. Any questions there? No. All right. Part B. B is negative nine. One third times negative nine, the quantity squared, minus one ninth times negative nine. Negative nine, the quantity squared is still positive 81. Okay. Minus one ninth times negative nine. All right. So 81 over. 3 is still 27 over 1, so I still get 27, okay? Negative 1 ninth times negative 9, subtracting a negative times a negative is a positive, so that's going to be plus, and the 9's reduce to 1 over 1, so plus 1, which is 28. Any questions there? No. All right. Let's take a look at this one. We have, let's see, a cubed minus 2ab plus b cubed. And we are to evaluate this expression for a equals negative 2 and b equals positive 3. So we've got two variables we're going to substitute for. So every place a appears, we put a negative 2. Every place b appears, we put a 3. So we've got a cubed, so negative two cubed, minus two times a times b plus b cubed. Negative two cubed, negative two times negative two times negative two is negative eight. And then we've got minus two times negative two would be a plus four times three is a plus 12. Okay, three cubed, three times three is nine times three is 27. Negative eight plus 12 is four plus 27 is 31. Any questions there? No. All right, we're gonna look at some graphs now. So we're gonna go back up here. Okay, it says construct a table of solutions and then graph the equation. And the equation is y equals x squared. Whenever I'm graphing something that I've never graphed before and I know nothing about it, what I like to do is make a table and I choose x values going from negative three to positive three. And then after I do that, then I can kind of explore to figure out if I need to do something else in addition to that. If X is negative three, we would get Y equals negative three, the quantity squared, which is nine. If x is negative 2, we would get y equals negative 2 to the quantity squared, which is 4. 
if x is negative one, we get y equals negative one, the quantity squared, which is one. If x is zero, we get y equals zero squared, which is zero. If x is one, we get y equals one squared, which is one. If x is two, we get y equals two squared, which is four. And if x is three, we get y equals three squared, which is nine, okay? So now the particular graph that I have only goes up to negative and positive six. So I'm not gonna be able to graph these two points, but you'll still get a good idea of what it looks like, okay? If x is negative two, y is four, that's right there. If x is negative one, y is one. If x is zero, y is zero. If x is one, y is one. And if x is two, y is four. Now, either I've messed up terribly, which is always highly possible, or this is not a linear equation. And it's not, it doesn't form a straight line. It forms what we call a parabola. Okay. Notice that it's symmetric. Notice that there were, uh, when x is negative three, y is nine, but when x is three, y is nine. We've got two x values going to four, two x values going to one. And so this thing is symmetric about this line here. Okay. Interestingly enough, today in the Math 95 class, we're going to be graphing these as well, but we're going to go into much more detail than we are doing here today. Anyway, any question about this particular problem? No. All right. Let's graph another one of these. Let's graph the following. Y equals negative X squared minus 2. And once again, I'm going to use table values going from negative three to positive three. All right. So now, if x is negative three, things get a little more complicated. We've got y equals negative, and then the quantity negative three squared minus two. Well, negative three, the quantity squared is nine, but then there's this negative sign in front of it. Negative nine minus two is negative 11, okay? If X is negative two, we have Y equals negative times negative two squared minus two. Well, negative two squared is four. So then we've got minus four minus two, which is negative six. If X is negative one, Y equals negative times negative one squared minus two. Well, negative one, the quantity squared is one. There's a negative sign in front of that. Negative one minus two is negative three. Okay. If X is zero, Y equals negative zero squared minus two, which is zero minus two, which is negative two. If X is one, Y equals negative one squared minus two, which is negative one minus two or negative three. If X is two, Y equals negative two squared minus two, which is negative four minus two is negative six. What do you think the last one's gonna be? 11. Negative 11. Negative 11. <clears throat> oh, I thought it was, yeah, all right. was 11. All right. Let's see. Now, again, I'm not gonna be able to graph these two, but I think I can get the, so negative two, negative six would be right there. Negative one, negative three would be right there. Zero, negative two. Oops, that's not correct. Zero, negative two. And then one, negative three, and two, negative six. And we get that parabola opening downwards. Okay. Any questions about that graph? No. All right, let's take a look at a cubic 
y equals x cubed. Okay. And again, I'm going to use negative three to positive three. If x is negative three, y equals negative three cubed, which is negative 27. If x is negative two, y equals negative two cubed, which is negative eight. If x equals negative one, y equals negative one cubed, which is negative one. If y equal, or x equals zero, y equals zero cubed, which is zero. If x equals one, y equals one cubed, which is one. If x is two, y equals two cubed, which is eight. And finally, if x is three, y is three cubed, which is 27. Okay. Well, let's see. I'm not gonna be able to, can I write up here? Nope, can't do it. I'm not gonna be able to graph that or that one. Probably not that one or that one either, huh? Well, it's because again, now, would I, if I was in a classroom, I'd have a big piece of graph paper that went up to like 20 and negative 20 and all that. And then I could graph those points, but I'm just limited by what I've got here. Negative one, negative one is here, zero, 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 and one, one is there. Now, it looks like, oh, that's a straight line. Well, let's take this negative two, negative eight. Negative two, that would be, that would be like down here somewhere, right? So it's not a straight line. What it actually looks like, and then this would go up to positive eight. Whoops, that didn't quite make it, but that's actually what it kind of looks like. All right, well, that's all I've got for you today. So for tonight, section 5.4, uh, you're going to deal with monomials, binomials, trinomials, polynomials, the degree. Oh, you know what? I think I left out. I left out one thing. Let's go back here. Let's take this trinomial. Okay. And we already determined that the degree of the first term was three, the degree of the second term was five, and the degree of the third term was one, right? Yeah. The degree of the entire polynomial is equal to the degree of the highest powered term. So this would be a fifth degree trinomial, okay? So you've got individual terms degrees, but then the degree of the entire thing is equal to the degree of the highest powered term. You don't add up all of these. You just take the highest one, okay? So let's say I've got um, 4x cubed y minus 3xy squared plus 7x or 7y uh, minus four. So this is a polynomial. The degree of the first term is four. The degree of the second term is three. The degree of the third term is one. And the degree of the fourth term is zero, right? Term by term. Yes. But the degree of the entire thing is fourth degree because the highest powered term is four, okay? okay? What if there's a tie? So what if there, this was like, uh, like that, okay? So then we had this. If there's a tie, then it's still just fourth degree. You don't add them together. Now you gotta be careful. The degree of the term, you add the exponents on the variables. The degree of the whole thing, you just take the highest powered term. You don't add all the degrees of all the variables. That's a common mistake. So be careful with that. All righty. Anyway, I'll be back at 1.15 this afternoon. Should you have any questions? Otherwise, you've got 5.4 to do tonight. I'm going to stop the recording.